Hello everybody, this is Dubspot Instructor Michael Hatzis, aka Bang and Crew. In this video, we're going to check out how to warp full tracks in Ableton Live. The material we're going to warp is electronic based, so we will take that into consideration when warping. Now throughout the series, we'll do a few different examples that will cover a bunch of different situations that can arise when warping full songs. But before we get started, I just want to mention that the best way to get good at warping tracks is through experience. The more tracks you warp, the better you're going to get. So just spend a bunch of time warping, it will be worth it in the long run. So Live is really good at warping short loops. So good, we almost don't even have to think about it. We just toss in a loop and it's automatically synced to the global tempo. But for full tracks, it's a little bit different. We need to give Live a little bit of help to get nice tight warping. So the first thing we're going to do, and we only have to do it once, is go into Preferences. And I'm going to my Record Warp Launch tab. And I'm just going to make sure Auto Warp Long Samples is turned off. By turning this preference off, we're basically telling Live that when we drag in a full track, that we don't want Live to warp it we're going to do it ourselves. This will save us a step or two in the warping process, so I definitely recommend following along and turning this preference off. So I think we're ready to go in and warp our first track. Track 1, or Case 1, is a track in which the main beat, or main drum pattern, starts off right at the beginning of the song. So I'm just going to bring in our first track. Okay, and it's just uh, creating the waveform here. And this song is a pretty easy one to start off with. Again, because the main drum pattern starts off right at the beginning of the track. And I'm just going to hit play. And we can hear that we have standard house techno style drum pattern. And this pattern is representative of what's going to happen for the rest of the song. Like if I move forward in the song, I move my start marker forward. All right, same drum pattern, move it even farther. Same four on the floor drum pattern. So again, right from the beginning, we have the drum pattern that is characteristic of the drums in the rest of the song. Sure, there's some other bits added in later on, but same basic pattern. Okay, so notice also that warp, the warp switch is turned off, and that is thanks to the preference we turned off uh, in the beginning of the video. I mentioned that we have to tell Live two things, or we have to help out Live to get a full song nice and tightly warped. So the two things we have to tell Live is, first we got to give Live an approximate tempo of the track. And the second thing we have to tell Live is where the track starts. Now, I know that telling Live where the track starts seems a bit strange and weird. But you'll see that we don't always want Live to think that all songs start from the beginning of the file. And if we look at this particular track, the beginning of the file's here. But our drum beat starts right there. And drum beats are always the easiest thing to warp because they give us a definite sense of time throughout a track. So what we're going to do is let's uh, tap out our tempo. So I'm actually just going to map this tap tempo to the T key. So I go into map mode, uh, tap the tap tempo button, hit T, and also the metronome. We'll check our warping against the metronome later on. So I'm going to click the metronome button, hit M, and uh, jump out of MIDI map mode. So approximate tempo. So I'm going to Play the track, tap along. Okay, so I tapped along and I got something like uh, 127, and that's good enough. Remember, I said approximate is the key word here. Just needs to be ballpark. Next thing I want to do is tell live where the track starts. Okay, so. I want live to think that the track starts right there, right up against that kick drum. Okay. So right at the beginning of the kick drum. At that transient, that burst of audio is where I want live to think the track starts. 
And the last thing I have to do to finish telling live that the song starts here is I have to right click that start marker and select set 1.1.1 here. So just to recap, telling live where the track starts is a two step process. First you put your start marker right up against that first kick drum and then you right click that start marker and select set 1.1.1 here. Now after I do that, you'll notice a couple things. You'll notice that the warp switch is now turned on and that we have warp markers in our track. Well, a couple warp markers. Okay, but the track isn't warped yet. I have to actually tell live to now warp it. So to warp it, I can either right-click the warp marker or I could right-click the start marker and just select warp from here straight. And I've noticed, and other people have noticed as well, that Warp From Here Straight works great for electronic material that is made by a sequencer, uh, kind of rigid drum patterns, and uh, I, I don't mean rigid as in not too much swing or vibe, I just mean that they're not going to drift off the way uh, a human performance would uh, throughout the course of a track. So anyway, our track is now warped, and... If we just go in, we could kind of look at the beats. I know that that is a kick drum right there, right on the downbeat of bar four. I'll go right here. I notice again there's a kick drum right on the downbeat of bar five. Uh, so on and so forth. So let's check it with the metronome. All right, everything sounds pretty good. The only thing left to do is tighten up the warping at the end of the track. I notice when warping like this, the beat starts slowly drifting off throughout the track. After the first few bars of the song, it's not a big deal. Much like a slow second hand on a clock won't make a big difference after a few minutes. But after a month, or in the case of warping, after a hundred bars or so, the drift will have a big impact on the timing. And if we go to the end of the track, you can see right here that here's uh, the beginning of bar 225. And here is our kick drum. And it's a little bit off. You can see it's a little bit early. Okay, so it's real simple to fix. So all we have to do to fix it is you'll notice we have this little transient marker right there. Okay. And notice if I hold the shift key, I could slide that transient marker around. See, now it's over there. I could hold the shift key, slide it over. Now it's there. So I'm just going to hold the shift key slide it again to the beginning of that kick drum and then I'm just going to let go of the shift key and drag the transient handle and the audio over to the beginning of the bar and notice I didn't add another warp marker right I could just double click anywhere and make a new warp marker and the reason I did that is because when you don't make a warp marker and you just drag a transient handle live readjusts the warping of the entire track if we added in another warp marker, all it would do is adjust the timing between the previous warp marker and the new warp marker. So now that we have nice tight warping at the beginning and nice tight warping at the end, logic would tell me that we should have a tightly warped track in the middle as well. So I we could just go to a random spot, beginning of bar 81, Bam, kick drum is lined right up as well. Okay, a couple more things. Let's set our project tempo to the tempo of our warp track. So 124. Okay, so now this will play back at its proper tempo. The other thing we want to do is we just want to make sure that we're not... If we're in beats mode, we don't want to use transients mode. I'm not going to get into the merits of every uh, different warping algorithm here. I just want you to be careful not to use transient mode for a full song. Uh, once you start drifting away from the original tempo, uh, it starts getting a bit wonky. And the last thing is to hit the save button. Okay, Very important. What the save button does is it stores all the warp settings we just made into an analysis file which you can see right here and it puts that analysis file in the same directory as 
your mp3 your wave file okay don't delete these things if you move your mp3 or wave file move the analysis file with it uh, if you don't you're gonna have to rewarp the track again so that was case one warping a song that has drums with a kick drum from the beginning of the song so that's it for this video but before we end let's do a quick recap to warp a full song in live we have to help out live by telling it two things first we have to give live an approximate tempo for the track which we can do by tapping the tempo along with the song the second thing is to tell live where the song starts there are two steps to this one first place the start marker right up against the first kick drum in the track then right click the start marker and choose set 1.1.1 here then we're ready to warp to warp right click the start marker again and choose warp from here straight remember warp from here straight is really good for electronically generated material and that's it so thanks for checking this out in the next video we'll check out how to overcome some pitfalls that can arise when warping full tracks also if you'd like to check out my music you can do so at soundcloud.com backslash bang include also be sure to subscribe to dubspot's youtube channel to be notified when we upload new videos and thanks a lot take care Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.